Hello there, my name is Lucas. I'm here uh, making a tutorial on digital film grain somehow and how you can make it yourself. And um, I'm making this for the uh, Frugal Filmmaker group on Facebook where I'm part of. This is a nice, simple and small community where we uh, share uh, yeah, how you can be a frugal filmmaker. This is started by Scott Eggleston with his YouTube channel, which I do uh, watch also. Uh, nice things. So, um, yeah, I guess my microphone doesn't sound that good, but it's nearly 4 o'clock in the morning, so um, I give a damn about it, and uh, yeah, let's get started and uh, let's make something grainy. Um, this is uh, just for the record, because I don't want to really cover it in this tutorial. There's always uh, stuff like Gorilla Grain or maybe uh, Cinegrain, where you can buy uh, clips recorded with real 35mm um, cameras, which you can easily drag on your footage. Um, I have a sample clip from them, so you just can see this here. We have this footage from a film of mine we drag this on top of it so now we go into the clip settings uh, make it blending mode to overlay and there we have some grain on it it looks pretty good of course it's not bad at all um, if you can see it all <laughs> um, then you can uh, copy that clip and paste it in over the video all along. So um, this is an option, but uh, it's pricey and I don't want to really cover uh, this here, but I just wanted to mention it if you didn't solve the conversation why I'm doing this tutorial at all. So to add some grain to our footage, we need some grain, of course, and we don't want to generate them. We want to have uh, real grain from photos or stocks or whatever so um, let's go to the Foundry website. The Foundry are the guys behind Nuke and NukeX and uh, several other programs, plugins, whatever and they have something nice for us so we go to training and go to Nuke and NukeX training resources. There we go to the Nuke user guide and now we scroll down and here are the following grain samples are also referred to. Here are grain samples from actual Kodak footage. So when we download them, we uh, download basically a TGZ file. So I don't want to download it because I already have. And if you open the TGZ file, you get a TR, TAR file within. And if you open that one, you get um, a sequence of pictures in the .rgb format. Now if your uh, NLE isn't, isn't capable of RGB files to open, you can always open these files with a program like XNView and batch convert them to uh, a better file format for you like TIFF or PNG or whatever. Um, yeah, so you can import it better. So I did it to TIFF and uh, just, just watch it here. So we um, want to uh, import it as a sequence. So basically we select one image and make sure you have TIFF sequence enabled. So let's make it open. So now we see we have 25 FPS, which is good because I'm working in 25 FPS. It's plain 2K, so it's really uh, 2K in 4x3. And um, also it's only 19 frames, but that doesn't matter. Let's drag the footage in a new composition. This is footage from a video I worked on lately and it's going to air on this Sunday. So it's uh, in two days on the 13th of May. can check it out if it's, if it's out. It's pretty cool, I guess. So um, now we have this grain and we can just drag it on top and set it to overlay. So it's only 19 frames. This is pretty short, uh, but it doesn't matter if we um, copy it and we could paste it on top. And this, this is a little bit stupid so let's make it a bit smaller. We go to interpret footage main and here we want to loop it a thousand times. Basically the length of this clip will uh, be uh, yeah looped over and over again you see it now it's 12 minutes nearly 13 and now we have 
a really long grain and uh, it's only 19 frames but that really doesn't matter you won't notice this so basically uh, you cannot see that it's only 19 frames uh, it's even harder to see this if you make it uh, as an blending mode so if this isn't enough for you it's not grainy or whatever maybe you cannot really see what I'm doing here because um, the streaming platform this video is on may not be able to handle this as much as we would like it to be <laughs> so we always can add a curves adjustment or a simple brightness and contrast or whatever uh, to make it a little bit harder in its grain and uh, that grain actually is has a little bit of color in it so we can also add a tint so it's black and white and um, this is the pretty nice solution to get it um, into some grain into your footage. It's not as much as some uh, people like but it's uh, but it's light so um, not it's not cool to make it extreme every time. Sometimes you want to adjust the slight adjustment and I think this is pretty good and does a good job and it's free and it's uh, really pro stuff and it fits up to 2k this is pretty cool. So in Premiere which I'm working with too is uh, pretty similar. We can take the TIFF files, make sure you hit numbered stills down here and um, drag it on top. Now we cannot loop this in Premiere. So in Premiere I have this nice uh, <laughs> this nice um, trick. We make a new sequence, we copy that here and just copy it over and over again. We ripple delete this so we copy them and we copy them, copy paste them and over and over again and then we copy them and we drag them again and now we are on 17 minutes and <laughs> yeah that's not the really the finest solution but it works at least so let's uh, unlink these here and remove that so here we go to um, go to overlay again and you see you have uh, again some grain on your footage also you can of course um, yeah, you can't see this here right now but that's okay you can also uh, change uh, the intensity over um, the uh, scale somehow because it is 2k we can scale it a bit and um, you can also change it to the opacity if you want it a little bit less or you can add it uh, through a curves adjustment or whatever so now maybe uh, th this works for any for any application which can do an overlay blending mode or something equivalent so uh, if your uh, NLE isn't capable of um, image sequences we go to we can use QuickTime actually so in QuickTime we go to uh, File, Open, uh, and not Open, we want to Build Sequence Open, that's the German version of QuickTime, so I guess it's Image Sequence, Open Image Sequence or something in the English version. If not, use the uh, shortcut uh, Control, Shift, O, yeah, hit that. Then we um, want to make it 25 pictures a second. Uh, we select the first one and uh, now we have this cool QuickTime feature that it opens it <laughs> in a full screen. Now we have this cool grain and now we can export it to any format we like. If you are on a Macintosh you can of course export it to um, to ProRes. Uh, on a Windows machine I would use uh, something like PhotoJPEG in 69%. Uh, now sound, okay and um, yeah you can simply uh, export it as a video and then drag it onto your onto your footage and uh, make the same thing in the in the uh, like in After Effects or Premiere that I showed you and um, this is one way to do it uh, next we want to see some other solutions how we can add grain to our footage now the foundry is not the only resource for nice grain images. I just found in some German forums, I didn't found it again, but I found um, once a nice little uh, free package from 
a nice user who made a nice grain for us. So let's add it here. Um, we use the strong options and just uh, lay it on top here. We can use the loop trick again if we like, but that's okay for now. So make it overlay. And now overlay is not good in this point. Let's use uh, multiply here. Depends on the grain you have. So now we have some pretty cool scratches in there too. And there's uh, a slower option, uh, slower, whatever. I mean, a decent, more decent option with less um, less scratches and such. So this is also pretty cool. Makes a bit of noise, a bit of grain. I hope you can see it at least <laughs> on the streaming platform. Uh, of course, you can always use uh, a brightness and contrast filter or better use uh, use uh, curves to simply make it more aggressive to your footage so um, that is another option I will try to find the guy and maybe ask him if I may download or upload this again for you guys because I don't want to make it uh, illegally or whatever there once was a short film called Mr. Fox which was uh, pretty pretty psychedelic um, but had an amazing look and an amazing grain in it um, I asked the, the maker or the the, the artist uh, how he did this and uh, he uh, made a sim pretty simple trick uh, uh, maybe uh, we all could think about this he took a very old DSLR camera an original uh, with film not DSLR, it's only an SLR and he made uh, a whole film of uh, a grey card. So he had uh, 36 photos of a grey card with a very high noisy film. So he had original film grain, just scanned it. And um, then he had a, a perfect original grain. Uh, and as I already mentioned, 36 frames are more than enough to make a decent grain. So this is an option for the very enthusiastic people out there and uh, who are willing to spend some time on this. Uh, now I will show you my favorite solution on making film grain, which is really awesome and it's pretty, pretty cool. Also, um, that's a problem about it, it's only doable in After Effects. So I'm now in After Effects. This is a behind the scenes shot from this project I showed you earlier. This is a girl standing around and I walk around her and this is this is my shadow and um, actually uh, this is a pretty bad shot but <laughs> it's okay for showing you what I mean so uh, we have this grain image here this is actually uh, very big it's really big uh, let's make it 100 percent and it's really 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 big and this is pretty cool also it's really um, yeah it's really aggressive I like that it's my loveliest so this technique before anyone uh, <laughs> thinks I'm a thief, I found it online somewhere. I don't know where, but um, I found it somewhere. So this is not my idea. So uh, we take the grain image and drop it on top. Uh, you see it's a bit bigger than the image. This is a 1080p image now. So now we want to... Um, the first thing we wanted to do, we want to make a keyframe in the beginning and the end of the shot, so it's exactly the length we need it. But you can prepare this uh, for yourself. So now um, we have to open the Wiggler. You maybe know the Wiggler expression, but th there's also the Wiggler in After Effects, which we are using for this. So now we have the Wiggler. Uh, so what we now want to do is we hit these two uh, keyframes, so both are selected, and now um, on the uh, we make it only to uh, X. We make it to X first. The frequency is um, the frame rate of our composition, so it changes any frame we have it. So this is 25p and a magnitude. And now, now it's tricky. The, mag uh, the magnitude is the grain document width minus the composition width divided by 2. So let's take the 
uh, calculator. <laughs> so we have the size of the grain, which is 4,679 pixels minus uh, 1920 or whatever. I don't. Uh, it's nearly four o'clock in the morning, so this is okay. So this number divided by two. So this is um, let's say 1379. 1379. Now we hit apply. So now you can see, and this is what we actually did here. Uh, the grain flips around in any any frame, so it makes a different thing on every every frame. So, uh, but because we made this tricky here, we never um, reach out of grain. So it never um, the grain never ends somewhere. So now we want to make it a little bit cooler even. We uh, select all keyframes by just hitting position. Now we make it Y, then we make frequency 25, which is cool. And then we make the same for the Y axis. So we have 3119 pixels minus 1080 divided by 2. So let's say 1019. 1019. So let's hit apply. And now it looks really cool. So and now it just flips around the. Uh, so and it's never the same, nearly never the same. You won't notice if it was. So now let's hit uh, this to overlay. And uh, make it empty here. And now we have a really cool grain. So this is a really nice and really original grain effect and nobody else will have it like this. So and this makes a huge difference. Let's watch it here. I hope you can see it, but I guess this is something you could see even on YouTube or Vimeo or I don't know where I upload this to. So uh, yeah, if this is too much in your eyes, <laughs> which I would understand, you still can lower the opacity Let's make it uh, 50%. And this is still a good amount. And if it's not aggressive enough for you, you can still add a curves filter or brightness and contrast or whatever you want. And uh, can make it even even more. So uh, yeah, maybe this is a bit too much. <laughs> so let's make it away here and just uh, live with this. Um, yeah, I like it really much, pretty much, and forget, don't forget, you can always manipulate any grain you have by lowering the the, uh, the opacity, or you can uh, shift the, the the brightness and contrast or whatever, so it doesn't is always the same. So with one grain image, you can make uh, really really much uh, really much stuff. So now it's uh, four o'clock in the morning, actually. So uh, <laughs> I want to stop here. I want to stop here. So I hope uh, this was useful for you. I hope you could learn something. And uh, yeah, I hope you. I hope we see us at the Frugal Filmmaker on Facebook. So uh, have a nice day and uh, have a good time.